Hey everyone, it's Dominic, the Primetime Treasure Hunter. Thanks for coming by to check out another video. In this video, I'm gonna talk to you about 10 ways that you could keep yourself positive and motivated if you're having a tough time with something regarding your reselling business. Now, for a lot of people watching this video, that's gonna mean slow sales. So just the volume is not where you expected it to be. Maybe at a weekend with no sales, maybe at a week or a month where things just really went bad. Maybe it was a whole season, a really bad summer slowdown that you've just gone through and you're wondering, man, is this really something that I should really stick with or not? And uh, you know, you're thinking about quitting. Maybe you started a YouTube channel related to reselling and you're not getting the views that you expected or you're not getting the subscriber count where you thought you should be at. Maybe you started a Facebook group related to reselling. And again, same kind of thing. You're not getting the amount of people that are commenting or are joining it that you expected to. So should you just quit it and give up or how do you stay motivated and continue you to do that. You know, staying motivated is a difficult thing sometimes because humans are naturally predisposed to thinking negatively. If you want proof of that, just go and look around any bookstore or, you know, in person or online and you will not find any books that talk about how to think negatively. There's no book that's out there to teach you how to do that. You know why? Because it's very easy to do that. That's what we naturally do. But there's lots of books out there on how to think positive because that requires some work and that requires some training. Now, a lot of you know that I have a background. I work full time as a board certified neuropsychologist. So I deal with people on a regular basis who have some type of uh, emotional pathology and they have difficulties with uh, motivation. I've written two books related to motivation. Um, not anything you should go out and purchase. They're academically based books. You'd be bored to death if you if you read them. But it's a main interest area of mine. So I'm going to be talking about some techniques um, that that can help you out uh, when we go through this top ten list here. So uh, number number one would be, and it's in no particular order, but you know this is the one we're going to start with. Is you really need to have goals that you lay out for yourself. And those goals need to be ones that are realistic goals. They need to be ones that are attainable. Uh, there's a lot of people who set goals for themselves that are just absolutely not possible. So for example, you start your eBay business and you tell yourself you want to make $50,000 within 60 days. That's what you want to do within the first year. For 99.9% .9 of the people who are just starting out on eBay, they are not going to be able to do that. So you need to make the goals more realistic and step up from there and grow over time. Now you need to also make sure that you're making goals that are challenging. They can't be so simple like you say I just want to make, you know, 10 bucks in the first month. I mean, anyone could do that. So you want to make them you got got to got to get them in what I call that goldilocks zone. You know, can't be too easy, can't be too hard. It's got to be just right. So you want it to be challenging but not too simple to attain. And those goals should be things that you write down. So for example, let me, I'm going to share you some examples as we go along the way with these tips in terms of things that I do myself. So one of my goals that I have had this year, and so far it's one of the only two goals that I have not yet accomplished. So it's really got high priority for me right now. I've got about four months left to try and hit it, which is I'm trying to hit the $10,000 mark in 60 days on, on eBay. Now, for some people watching this, that's going to seem like that's simple. For other people who are watching this, you're going to think that that's, you know, very, very difficult and challenging. So it really depends on where you are. Remember, I have a separate full-time job. I got a lot of other things going on. So trying to fit this in is something I think is attainable to do. I definitely believe that. I know that. Uh, but yet it is challenging. Now, I have written down my goals right here and I keep it out. You may have seen this behind me when I'm doing some videos that I have it out right here in terms of the, you know, the number mark where I'm trying to get to and the days that I've accomplished it. And by putting the actual dates that I accomplished a goal, that when I look at that, that shows me I'm making progress and that that's something that motivates me. But what also motivates me is seeing down below these number areas, 8K, 9K, 10K, that I haven't hit it yet. So 
uh, part of this uh, first tip is that, you know, having a challenge for yourself is real important because, you know, when you have a challenge, that's something that you want to actually go and pursue. You want to pursue, you want to try to accomplish that challenge. Now, another thing related to this is you want to also, you know, try to develop a mindset that is one in which you don't give up once you hit a roadblock or you stumble or something like that. You have to have the mindset of that you are a type of person that gets, when you get knocked down, that you get yourself back up. If uh, you want some motivation uh, for that, go back and watch. If you've never seen them before, a lot of people have. Go back and, back and watch the Rocky movies. I just rewatched watched all of those with my son. And that's a big theme throughout that, you know, throughout those movies. It's just, you know, keep, you know, getting knocked down and getting back up. It's not how many times you fall, not how many times you stumble. It's how many times you could get back up and rise to the challenge and keep trying to overcome setbacks. So you have to keep telling yourself that over and over. These are positive, affirmative thoughts that can really help you out. So that is one thing kind of right there is uh, all kind of jumbled up into one big you know, initial tip. And one of the other things you see that I have written down here is how I'm going to get to that uh, goal. And you can see here, I have different um, scenarios in terms of how I actually want to get my listings done. So I, you know, I want to go through, you know, comic books. I want to do bulk comic book lots. I want to sell something related to clothes because I have a clothing death pile. Uh, and then I also want to do something in bulk. So a big bulk item. I'll show you one of those later. And then I, you know, get to as many things as I possibly can the rest of the day. Like, you know, so you have to have a plan in place to hit those goals and those goals need to be ones that are measurable. You have to be able to, to measure them. Now, if for some reason you fall short on those goals, like if at the end of the year, let's say I don't hit the 10K, I've got to reevaluate and figure out, okay, where did things go wrong so I could readjust and make that goal something that's more attainable. So don't give up just because you don't uh, hit it, but set yourself up uh, for a challenge and then go out and try to accomplish it as much as possible. Okay, so moving on to number two. Number two, and this might be different for different people, but at least for me, I get motivated a lot when I listen to music. So certain types of music really, you know, kind of pumps me up. I kind of associate like scenes of accomplishment in my mind and feelings of accomplishment with the music. So I like all different types of music. I prefer hip hop music, uh, dance, electronic uh, music. I love ambient uh, slash electronic music as well. Um, but I, you know, I like all different types. I mean, there's heavy metal music that I like. There's rock and roll songs that I like. I like all sorts of things. But whatever it is for you, you know, play that music sometimes and kind of get that you know um, image of accomplishment in your mind and play it to the tune. And that could re-motivate you, especially during times when you're feeling low. You know, music is a very, very powerful uh, a thing and, you know, attaches to our emotions and it, it could really, really help you out. Not only that, I've also found that towards the end of the night, if you're getting tired, um, you know, put on like a tune that is kind of maybe a little bit more fast paced or something. And that could kind of get your mind kind of going and kind of make you more alert. It's hard to fall asleep if you have music playing right around you, especially if it's music that's, you know, that's good, that you like, that it kind of excites you. So think about that. Think about that music and pair that with uh, successes, uh, feelings of successes and thoughts of accomplishment, um, you know, with regards to a goal you're trying to pursue, and that will kind of get you motivated uh, to keep trying those uh, sorts of things. So that's the that's the second thing uh, right there. Now the third one, I got to be careful how I phrase this one because it has to do with comparing yourself to other people. And you have to be careful how you do this. Sometimes, you know, we kind of say generally, don't compare yourself to others. And that's true in the sense that you don't want to compare yourself in a negative way to other people and, and let those negative thoughts instantly crop into your head. For example, you know, you had a weekend, let's say, where you made $50 in sales, and then you go see you know, person X, reseller X, Y, and Z on Facebook or on Instagram or on YouTube, and they just made $500 in sales and they have 20 packages going out the door. If you compare yourself to that and think negative thoughts about yourself, like I'm not good enough, uh, I must be not good at this because look at what this person can do, then that's bad. That's a bad comparison. But 
you got to change it around. You got to shift your mindset. You have to think differently. So just remember this. These are the principles behind cognitive behavioral therapy or CBT, which is that our thoughts control our feelings, not the other way around. It's the way you think about something that's going to determine how you feel. And that links right into motivation. The way you think about something links into your motivation about it and how motivated you're going to be. So instead of seeing that person who made uh, $500 in sales and has, or has 20 packages going out the door, think to yourself, wow, that's amazing. That's where I want to get to. And how could I learn from that person? Maybe I could send that person a message. Maybe I could follow that person on YouTube and see what they're doing. And that's somewhere where I want to get to. Realize that you're not quite there right now, but that's a goal that you aspire to. So a lot of these uh, different steps and different tips I'm going to tell you relate to one another because once you kind of make that connection with that other person uh, and you know, say, wow, that's someone I want to be like. I want to emulate. That person could be almost like a mentor uh, in a way. And they don't even have to know it, but they could still serve as like, a mentor role, um, you know, that gets into developing goals and developing challenges for your for yourself that you're trying to accomplish. So they all kind of relate to uh, one another in one way. Maybe that person who you watch on YouTube who's doing really well, maybe they have a cool, you know, jingle, a cool musical tune that you like, that you listen to. And every time you start to play that, that starts to motivate you and pump you up. Or when their video ends, that might pump you up and say, wow, yeah, now I've got to, you know, get to what I'm doing and get some listings up. So those are three things right there. Now, number four, you need to love what you do. You have to love it. If you love it, you're going to be motivated to maximize your potential. It's really important. You know, people who are watching this video, you know, who are reselling, you all started this for a reason. Um, and that kind of links to my, uh, my next tip, which is also, you know, remembering why is it that you're doing this? Find, you know, what your why is, why you decided to do this to begin with. So, you know, a lot of people are doing it to support family. Uh, that's a reason why I do it, to have extra money to uh, be able to pay for college when my kids get older, because no matter how much money I make from my regular job, it's not going to be sufficient to pay for college. I don't know what's going to go on with, you know, scholarships and all that type of stuff. And so I want to make sure that, you know, my kids are going to be taken care of. And uh, that's my number one concern. And also good to have some extra spending money here and there, go on vacation. But for different people, there's different reasons. And you've got to find that out. And, you know, you've got to have love again, going back to my, my prior tip, you've got to have love for it. So, you know, you got to enjoy going out and, 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 you know, finding the treasures and, you know, of course you're going to enjoy making the money, but there's got to be, you know, components. You got to, you know, enjoy just the whole community of, uh, of resellers that are out there. Yeah. There's some drama here and there, but by and large, for the most part, it's a really fun and supportive place to be. So really important to have that passion, have that love. Remember why it is you're doing it. You know, maybe you go back and think of, remember that, you know, your successes. This is another tip of mine. Remember your successes. Think back to it. When you made that sale that went for $100 for an item that you picked up for 5 bucks or something like that. Remember how good that made you feel. You know, when that happened to you, you probably said to yourself, wow, I did that. I could probably do that again and again and again. But, you know, reselling isn't like that, you know, in, in realistic terms. You're going to have some great days like that where you're going to have an emotional high. You're going to have a, you know, $300 day or something like that. And then you're going to have another day where you barely have any sales or you almost have no sales. So it's going to kind of be like a roller coaster sometimes. Your goal is to try to get it as stable as possible, but it's going to happen and it happens to every business. You have to realize that. You have to recognize that. Lots of stores run specials and they run deals. Um, you know, during the middle of the week because they have low sales themselves. So it happens. It happens to everyone. Recognize that it's not just you and that will also be something that helps keep you motivated. And related to that, you know, do things that are within your control to try to get things back on a positive, uh, you know, in a positive way. So, you know, get listing, put things up. Now that's part of why you're watching this video. Maybe you don't have the motivation to put the listing up, but we'll get to that a little bit later. Probably my last tip, maybe something that when you stop this, you say to yourself, all right, I'm going to go out and I'm going to get some listings up if you're struggling with that. So, um, Another thing that's real important to do is cutting out distractions. 
Um, you know, maybe you come home from a long day's work or something. That's a lot of people are watching this are probably part-time resellers, but there's some of you out there that are full-timers as well. But regardless, you're still going to have things around you that can be distractions. It could be social media. It could be television. It could be, you know, some sort of uh, chores that are kind of scattered around the house you have to do. You have to find a way to carve out blocks of time just for you and focus on that and nothing else. Give time to your kids. Give time to your spouse. You know, give time to the chores. Give time to yourself for exercise, health, all that type of stuff. But you also have to carve out focus time for your business because that's when you're going to be more productive. When you're taken away this way and that way, doing this task, this task, and you could barely get to a reselling task, well, guess what? You're not going to have enough listings up. You're not going to make enough sales and your motivation is going to go down. Okay. There's nothing that helps motivation more with reselling than hearing that cha-ching sound and making those sales. So it's very, very important that you could put yourself in a position to get there because when you hear that sound, you make those sales, Boom, motivation's gonna shoot right up and then you're gonna be back on track again. So we gotta find a way to get you back into that mindset. Um, another thing that you have to do is um, you have to always uh, remember that things can be worse, okay? This kind of goes back to that cognitive behavioral uh, therapy that I was talking about earlier that sometimes you have to do with yourself, okay? So yeah, you had a bad weekend. You know, you only made two sales, for example. But you know what? Two sales are better than no sales. Now you're gonna tell me, you're gonna tell me, well, guess what? I made no sales this past weekend or I made no sales in the past week. Okay, you, you made no sales in the past week, okay? But maybe you only have, you know, 20 items up on eBay. So you got to get, you know, more items up. This gets back to kind of empowering yourself and doing the things that, you know, you need to do to get yourself more successful. But remember, even if you had zero sales, okay, there were probably, I don't know, 50, 100 people just at some point during that day that got their accounts removed on eBay and they can no longer sell anymore. And that is not a place that you obviously want to be. And so you, you know, you have the potential still to get those items up, get them listed. Things could almost always be worse in almost any situation that you could say. So sometimes when you think of, you know, situations that could be, you know, much less fortunate than when you're in, that could help you kind of put things into a better perspective and just kind of get you, uh, get you moving again. And this kind of gets me to my last point. I trust me, there were 10 tips in here at least, uh, and definitely more than 10. So, you know, uh, th but this is my last and final one, which is that you have to remember that you cannot succeed unless you try, you have to get up and do it. It's that Nike phrase that's, you know, you know, just do it. You've got to just get up and do it. Now I'm going to share with you to end this off, just like a little personal thing that happened with me this past week. And I, hope to do a later separate video on this, which I hope to be my biggest sale that I've ever made on eBay. I'm hoping that it's going to be over a thousand dollar sale. But basically what happened, the nuts and bolts of it is that um, I have this pretty big comic book collection and they're very old comic books. They're Avengers books. They're listed in my eBay store right now. Well, what I was doing initially was I was piecing them out one by one and listing them. And I thought that I would make more money that way if I if I if I listed it that way. Uh, the problem is, is that for each individual book, which had various degrees of damage on them, um, that they were they were just kind of caught up in the mix, which uh, with a bunch of other books. Even though my pricing was pretty good, it was difficult for people to find them. And even I found if I was uh, promoting them, uh, it was still challenging to get a good number of views on it. And after a week. There were no sales. There were some watches, but no sales. So I had put up 30 books like this, okay? Now, while I'm doing that, I'm not listing other items, of course, and I'm not making that many sales compared to what I was doing last month. Last month, I was killing it. If you remember my uh, What Sold video, my top 10 items for the first time ever, all were over $100 and they were highly profitable items. Now, don't get me wrong, I've had a good month so far, uh, and you'll see that soon when we do the next What Sold video, but I had this period there for a few days where I didn't do well, only had two sales over the weekend. You know, it wasn't good. So I had to tell myself, okay, and this is another thing that's important. You have to be honest with yourself. You have to say to yourself, okay, what am I doing here? Am I doing something wrong? So what I decided to do, because I had a lot more books to list, is I just made the tough decision to end all of those listings 
get things back into what I felt was a more controllable and productive situation for me, protect my time better, and I just put them all together in one big lot comp uh, combined with all these other books, which is a total of 89 bucks. So there are old Avengers comic books from the 1970s. I have them up right now for $1,800 and within two days already has three watchers on them. So I'm excited to see what happens uh, with those. And, you know, um, but I had these, you know, this period of low sales, you know, for a few days because I was listing all these books and they weren't selling. Uh, so now I have to find a way to kind of get myself back on track, right? So, you know, last night I came home, I listed a few costumes because I knew those were quick, just front and back pictures. It was pretty easy. Uh, but then I wanted to make sure I got up some listings that were, uh, that were worth more, some more expensive items. So one of the things that I pulled out is, uh, right here. You may remember this from one of my, one of my sourcing videos is this, uh, Nintendo box right here. Now this is something that to do it right required 12 photos. I, you know, had to take it out. I had to clean it. I had to stage it. I had to connect it to the TV. I had to put the game in, take pictures, show it at work, all that kind of stuff. Now this was like, like 1030 last night and I got all the pictures done. I sent it to myself. I'm getting all ready to list them and I'm so exhausted just from the whole day, you know, of a regular full day of work, whatever that I just pass out. I wake up at about 5.45 in the morning and I realized that I haven't posted this yet. So what do I do? I get in there, I realize how much time I have, I get the item posted, okay? I didn't get depressed, I didn't get upset, I just you know, took control of the situation, got it posted, within, let's say, three to four hours, sold for $85. So. Um, now, guess what? I'm super. I mean, motivation definitely goes up. I'm feeling good about myself. But I had to remember. I had to remember to tell myself last night. You know, you're only going to get things accomplished if you keep trying and keep working on it. So yeah, I had a setback. I had a period where I was not making as many sales as I would like to. I know the formula for success for me because I have it written down right here, and I've been following this, and I've been doing very, very well with it. You know, everyone else is going to have their own formula, but I went back to it and, uh, you know, just started back up and there you go. You know, made a nice sale. Again, motivation is up and, um, you know, I'm just excited to keep going forward. So you have to remember, like, even if you're in a situation where you have an item that's going to require a lot of prep time and stuff, and you might tell yourself, oh, this is going to take forever. I got to take 12 photos. I got to take it out of the box. I have to take pictures, all that stuff. Yeah, you do. But you know what? Remember this. This is my, my last final thing is that once you get started on the project, once you actually get up and you make that first step and that second step, then everything is going to flow from there and you're going to be okay. It's the, the whole biggest challenging part is getting up from where you're sitting and then going over and starting the task. That's the hardest part. And that's why a lot of people might be watching these videos because that is a challenge for you. But remember, you gotta tell yourself that, you gotta realize that, and then you gotta tell yourself positive thoughts to overcome it, get up, start moving. You're only going to make progress if you are actually moving, not if you're staying still. Staying still bad, moving, good. I'm not talking about exercise, I'm just talking about actually moving along, doing something, doing some type of activity. So that's what I got for you. I hope that you found that these tips were helpful. This is by no means an exhaustive list of motivational tips. They're just the top ones that came to my mind. If you have other ones, other things that motivate you, put those down below in the description. Let me know what tip that I presented here today that you found the most helpful and maybe something that you're gonna uh, try and use for yourself. So if you like the video, give it a big positive thumbs up. Also make sure that you subscribe to the channel. If you know someone who is struggling with motivation right now, they're thinking of quitting, they're thinking of giving up, send them this video to pump them up and get them going, okay? You gotta, gotta think positively and get moving. So with that, uh, last thing I'm going to say, and you know, I'm always going to throw this in there is come by. If you want motivation too, you got to come by the Facebook reselling resource center. I mean, that is just an awesome place with a lot of positive, supportive people. I mean, you've got a group of over 11,000 supportive resellers who try to boost you up 
in any kind of difficult time. No one's going to try to tear you down. No trolls, no bullies, nothing like that. Yes, it's true, even though it's social media. So come on by, check it out. We are there to help you out. Uh, lastly, make sure that you come to uh, my Instagram account at prime underscore time underscore treasure. I'll see you all at the next video, everyone. Take care.